Hello and welcome to Katrina's Creations. This is the Wednesday episode when we do a tutorial of some sort. And today we're going to be talking about different um, types of fibers and what they're made of and how they are processed. Sometimes when you get your yarn and you read the back of it and it has all of these different fiber contents that are making it up, it's like reading the back of your food uh, ingredient list. And so I thought I would explain what some of the things are. Uh, there are basically three different categories that your yarn would fall into. There is man-made, plant-based, and animal-based. So we'll start with the easiest one first, and that would be animal-based. Animal-based uh, animal yarns are yarn that comes from sheep, goats, camels, yaks, rabbits, alpacas, vicuñas, uh, llamas, kiviets, and some dogs, muskox, and even worms. Uh, that's where your silk comes from, is from a worm that is the, uh, it's called the silkworm. It eats mulberry leaves, and they then take the cocoon uh, that the worm forms, and it's boiled, and they actually unravel it because their cocoon is actually one big long strand of silk. And so that is where silk comes from. Uh, but as far as the process, there are different types of hair within these animals. Some produce more like a fleece, like your sheep, your camels, uh, musk ox, yak, llamas, and uh, alpacas. They all form like a fleece type of, of uh, wool. And then there are some that are more hair-like, which would be, of course, dogs and rabbits, angora rabbits, uh, they are more hair-like, and cashmere is more hair-like than it is more like a fleece. And as far as how they are processed, they are removed from the animal in different ways. Fleece, of course, are sheared uh, off of the animal, in other words, just cut off of the animal that when their coat is trimmed. And the hair, uh, animals that have hair like angora rabbits, or like a dog, if you really wanted to wear dog hair, which I don't, but um, anyway, if you wanted to, that is just from combing the animal, uh, just like you would comb your dog and you get hair in the brush, that's how they get the, the um, cashmere and angora, things like that for processing. The spinning process is all the same. It is cleaned and then it is spun from there. Now the next category would be plant-based. Plant, and I'm not going to name all of them because there are a lot, but the, the main ones that you see in your yarn a lot of times are cotton, bamboo, flax or linen, soy, hemp, and rayon. And some of you may be going, rayon? I thought that was a acrylic or a synthetic yarn. Technically, it is not, uh, so I'll explain that. Tencel also is considered a plant-based yarn. So let's talk about them a little bit. Um, fibers such as hemp or flax and linen, flax and linen are the same thing. Uh, those come from reed-like plants and bamboo as well, come from a plant that has a sinew inside of it uh, that they process, they break the stalk open and they remove the fiber that is inside it and that fiber is then cleaned and spun. Um, and it's usually combed as well. It's combed uh, to get all the excess, uh, like short bristles and things out, and then it is spun from there. Now, bamboo can be processed just like the linen um, can be processed, but it also can be processed by what's called a slurry method, where they take the bamboo stalk and it's beaten and then boiled, and then they produce like a slurry out of it, and that slurry is then... Um, almost processed how a acrylic or synthetic yarn would be, uh, where it's drawn through it. it. It's like a gummy substance, and it comes through a, like a strainer, and it forms the string that becomes the yarn. Tencel is also known as lyocell, and that is the same process. It is the same slurry process. It comes from a wood pulp. Soy is also processed as a slurry 
uh, process where, again, the uh, stalk is beaten down and um, there's liquids added to it, and then it is drawn through a strainer and it forms the fibers. Now, rayon is actually also known as viscose, and it is created from regenerated natural cellulose. So that's why it's not considered a synthetic is because it is from natural cellulose. I have natural cellulose that I could donate if they wanted some. Uh, so anyway, that is the plants. And then we move on to the man-made, and that's probably one of the more confusing because there's lots and lots of man-made yarns out there. They go under different names, um, even though they're very, very similar. You could hear synthetic or acrylic, nylon, polyester, polyamide. Uh, most of them are petroleum-based in some way, shape, or form. Nylon is petroleum-based. It is a process of using air, coal, and water, and it's made into nylon chips, and those nylon chips can then be melted and formed into whatever they want to form them into, uh, or they can form them into strands, which creates uh, your nylon yarns. Uh, the process was developed in 1930 and was used a lot during the 1940s for nylon stockings. Um, polyester is also a petroleum base, and it is caused by a chemical reaction between acid and alcohol. And it's then created into like a fiber fill like or, or your polyfill, which you use for your stuffed animals and things. But they can also take that same poly, uh, polyfill and spin that into a fiber to create uh, yarn from there. Polyamide is made from a polymers, or uh, it also falls under the same category as nylon. Uh, it's almost interchangeable, and uh, it's processed the same way pretty much as the nylon. So I hope that's untangled a, a little bit of um, the confusion with trying to read labels on yarn. And often you see sock yarns where they have mixed different yarns together. They've mixed a natural uh, fiber like either um, a plant-based or an animal-based, and they mix it with a nylon or an acrylic of some kind. And the reason for that is the acrylic yarns um, or synthetic yarns are very strong, and so it gives extra strength to the yarn itself, and it makes your socks last a lot longer. Uh, so most socks, you will find some that are 100% cotton, but most of the time uh, they do have some... Um, man-made materials in there and it also gives them elasticity uh, so that they don't stretch out and stay stretched out of shape. Uh, so that's why there's sometimes there's blends uh, just to make the yarn itself a little bit stronger, a little bit more durable. Of all three types, the cheapest of course is going to be your man-made yarns because they're easier, they're faster to produce, they're not as labor intensive. Um, so it all depends on what you're looking for and what kind of price range you're looking for. So I hope that's answered some, some questions. It's very basic, but um, hopefully it was helpful to everybody. And thank you for watching this week's Wednesday tutorial. See you all on Saturday.